Hello and welcome to it and t Cabling Systems presentation. This presentation will talk about telecommunication distribution design. My name is Taif Shaker. I am a technical manager for at and t Cabling Systems handling Middle East and Africa. We are going to talk about standard backbone distribution system, horizontal cabling system, channel and permanent link, work area, balanced twisted pair telecommunication outlet and connector, interconnections and cross connections, designing telecommunication spaces, horizontal pathways, consolidation points, multi-user telecommunication outlet assembly, MOTOA, connecting telecommunication spaces together, general consideration for telecommunication spaces, grounding and bounding, fire stopping, and administration. Standards are a set of documents that describing the best practices of doing things. In our industry, there are many standards that associated with us. We are going to talk about TIA or ANSI TIA standards, mainly in this subject. Uh, our main standard that it is very important for us, which is TIA 568-D.0. It is generic telecommunication cabling for customer premises. Then we have TIA 568-D.1. It is commercial building telecommunication cabling standard. Then there is ANSI TIA 568-D.2, which is balanced twisted pair telecommunications cabling and component standards. All those three standards talking mainly about structured cabling. While TIA 569D talk about commercial building pathways and spaces. 606C talking about administration standard for commercial telecommunication infrastructure. 607C generic telecommunication bonding and grounding or earthing for customer premises. Then there are another standard which is from International Organization of Standardization, which is 11801-1, generic cabling or for general requirement, and CINELIC EN50173-1, information technology generic cabling systems. What is the backbone distribution system? The backbone distribution system is the part of premises distribution system that provide connecting connection between telecommunication spaces. A backbone distribution system typically provide building connection between floors in multi-story building and campus connection in multi multiple building environment. What are the components of backbone distribution system? A backbone distribution system may consist of any of the following. Cable pathways, inside or outside, example, cable tray, cable conduit, um, sleeves outside or even manholes. Then there is equipment rooms or ERs that may contain horizontal cross connect, HR, H HC, or as it's known in international standard floor distribution or intermediate cross-connect ICs, which is uh, known in international standards as building distributor, or main cross-connect MC, which is known as campus distributors. Then there is telecommunications rooms, which are typically contains uh, horizontal cross-connection connection, HCs or floor distributors. Telecommunication enclosures that typically contain horizontal cross connections as well. Then we have entrance facility where the service provider or access provider bring his equipment and install it in. Of course, 
for any backbone system we need in transmission media example of transmission media fiber optic cable or multi pair copper cable in addition to that we can use we can use miscellaneous support facilities such as hvac administration grounding and so on we are going to talk about backbone distribution system definitions that we highlighted before each and every one and what does it mean equipment room it is an environmentally controlled centralized space for telecommunications equipment that usually house a main or intermediate cross connect telecommunication room it is an enclosed architecture space for housing telecommunications equipment cable terminations and cross connect cabling entrance facility it is an entrance to building for both public and private network service cables and including wireless facilities the entrance point of the building and continuing to the entrance room or space telecommunication enclosure a, a telecommunication space that differs from equipment room and entrance facility in that this space is generally considered a floor serving or tenant serving as opposed to building or campus serving uh, it is space that provide a connection point between backbone and horizontal cabling continuing the backbone topologies definition a horizontal cross connect is a group of connectors for example patch panels patch blocks that allow equipment and backbone cabling to be cross-connected with patch cords or jumpers. Floor distribution is the international equivalent term for horizontal cross-connect. Intermediate cross-connect, it is the connection point between backbone cables or IC or building distributor as international equivalent for it that extend from the main cross connect campus distribution or the first level backbone and the backbone cables from horizontal cross connection or what we uh, say in international uh, terms floor distributors building distributor is the international equivalent term for intermediate cross connect then the main cross connect where we have multiple intermediate cross connected connection connected back to the main cross connect this is in campus environment for example it is normally located in the main equipment room for cross connection and interconnection of entrance cables first of all backbone cables and equipment cables the campus distribute distribution is the international equivalent term for the main cross connect For each network design, there is a topology. The backbone design, it is a tree-like structure where the trunk and the branch relationship exist. Each trunk can have many branches. Other arrangement might include high-rise building in which the backbone may be entirely inside the building or campus system, which is containing small buildings with only one horizontal cross connect per building thereby eliminating the need for intermediate cross connect in a typical application the link from main cross connect to intermediate cross connect may be an interbuilding or intra building link depending on the situation intermediate cross connect to horizontal cross connect will be typically an intra building link you can look at the graph on the right hand side and you can allocate main cross connect intermediate cross connect and horizontal cross connect those terms which we were talking about were discussed in TIA 568C in TIA 568D there are new terms you used but we still 
working on the old terms that we are referring to. So, what is the difference between the two versions of the standards? According to the new 568D, the distribution area, the first distribution area is DA, then DB, and then DC. DA means it is horizontally cross-connect, DB means intermediate cross-connect, and DC means the main cross-connect. And there are three levels of cabling system subsystems or backbone, subsystem one, subsystem two, and subsystem three. We talked about backbone distribution system. Now we are going to talk about horizontal cabling system. What is the horizontal cabling system? It is the part of the telecommunication cabling that extends from the work area telecommunication outlet or connector to the horizontal cross connection or the floor distribution. Typically, it is located in the floor serving telecommunication room. The horizontal cabling system consists of horizontal cables, telecommunication outlet, connectors in the work area, mechanical terminations, work area equipment cords, network equipment cords, and other patch cord or jumpers. It is allowed to have consolidation point or CP or Mutawa multi-user telecommunication outlet assembly in the part of horizontal cabling system. The horizontal cabling system should be designed in order to support various telecommunication applications. Those applications are not limited to voice, data, audio and video services, and building signaling systems. Horizontal cabling system is often less accessible than backbone cabling. Making chains can become time intensive or expensive. As frequency, frequently accessing or changing the horizontal cabling leads to disturbance of occupants. The choice and layout of horizontal cabling types are important to the design of building structure cabling systems. Therefore, it is highly recommended to plan the horizontal cabling system very carefully to satisfy today telecommunications need and reduce ongoing maintenance and relocation in the future, as well as accommodate future user applications and active equipment and services chains. There are two main terms that describes the horizontal cabling systems, transmission channel and permanent link. The transmission channel, it is the part of horizontal cabling where end-to-end -end transmission path between two points at which application specific equipment is connected. This channel is compo composite of permanent link, required patch code, equipment patch code, and any interconnection patch code, as long as the connection points. The permanent link, it is located within the transmission channel. It's extended from the horizontal cross connect to the telecommunication outlet only. No more than three connection points or connecting hardware are allowed as the horizontal cross connect and the telecommunication outlet connector are each required a connection. This allow no more than one CP to be placed in the permanent link. There is a new concept in TIA 568D called modular plug terminated link, MPTL. This allow us to connect a modular plug similar to the picture shown on the right bottom to the horizontal cabling system. So we will have horizontal cabling system connected to a connector from horizontal cross connection 
and to the modular plug from the other side. This will facilitate the use of Wi-Fi access point and surveillance cameras. The telecommunication outlet is part of the horizontal cabling systems. The balanced twisted pair telecommunication outlet, according to the standard, required each four pair cable to be terminated on eight pole, eight connector type modular at the work area. Most cabling standards simply specify the pairing of pins without actually assigning color distinction. The two common pin pairings are T568A and T568B. The pin or pair assignment for those connectors are shown on the right. These assignments are compatible with all non-telecommunications applications intended to operate over 100 ohm balanced twisted pair. As we said, horizontal cross connect is part of horizontal cabling systems. In horizontal cross connect, we are expecting two type of connections, interconnections and cross connections. The interconnection is on the left hand side. It is basically connecting the connecting hardware to the active equipment using a normal cord or patch cord while the cross connection, which is on the right hand side, it is connecting the active equipment front to the back of connecting hardware or the patch panel, and then connecting two connect connecting hardwares or two patch panels together using patch cord. This method is used before when we have different active equipment connector than the connecting hardware in the field. Nowadays, this method is used to connect active equipment to cross connection field and keep the active equipment safe in safe environment. This is mainly used in order not to touch the active equipment connectivity and keep this active equipment connectivity presented as as in uh, the second connecting hardware which is the patch panel on the top shown in the graph now we are going to discuss how to design structured cabling systems and what are the required tools to start the design you need the building and campus layout, furniture layout if available, drawings to be scaled and last version, customer requirement, RFQs, statement of works, all kind of document that is useful to start your design. Of course, you need a calculator and stationery. Let us discuss customer requirement. The designer should carefully assess customer requirement before selecting the style of cabling given in any project. Some of these customer requirements may include number of user, works area, and telecommunication space used to serve the building occupants, number of telecommunication outlet or connector desired at each user work area, number and style of user equipment, for example, telephony, LAN, or building automation. Then, the cabling system transmission performance expect expectations, for example, 10 gigabit per second, 1 gigabit per second, or anything else. Backbone distances involved in the building campus design. This is very important topic. We need to calculate the distances between our main cross connect intermediate cross connect and horizontal cross connect in order to be the safe side for calculation of the bandwidth 
we are going to use. Future growth expectations, for example, 15 to 20% recommended as a minimum growth factor for the future. In addition to that, we have to consider environmental conditions that may influence the selection of cabling components. As a designers of telecommunication cabling systems, we need to design the telecommunication spaces. How to properly design structured cabling systems and telecommunication spaces? We have to establish the standard. And the most important thing is to calculate the gross and usable floor area for all, for all the floors and the total building area. That means if we have multi-story building, we need to calculate each story floor area and then add those areas together in order to determine our spaces. Then we have to determine the quantity and location of each telecommunication room. Determine size and location of each equipment room. Determine size and location of entrance facility. Then we have to tie all of those telecom spaces together. Then tying telecom space to outlets, to work areas, and we have to design the required pathways. Then outfit each and every individual space. We are going to go through all this processes in the next slide. One of the major factors of proper structure cabling design is calculating the area. There are two kinds of areas that we need to calculate, gross and usable area. The usable area, basically, it is part of the gross area minus the core area. What is the core area? The core area, it is elevator shafts, mechanical and electrical shafts, mechanical and electrical rooms, staircases and bathrooms. All of these, all of those areas doesn't require any connectivity. Therefore, we have to disclude it from our calculation. Usually, if you don't have this information, you can use the core area as 20% of the gross area. After calculating the gross and usable area, we need to count how many work area that we have in the project. The work area, it is those spaces in the building where occupants normally work and interact with their telecommunication equipment. The telecommunication space sizing guidelines for horizontal cabling distribution are based on distributing telecommunication services to the individual work area. How to calculate the work areas? We are considering there, there is a work area for each 9.3 meter square of usable floor space. So we have to divide the usable floor space by 9.3 meter square in order to get the number of work areas. In addition to that, we have to calculate for BAS work area, the building automation system work area. And this can be calculated as 23.2 meters square from the gross area. Designer can use furniture layout to distribute work areas according to the customer need. But in general, if we don't have furniture layout, the recommendation is to use the work area calculation. Now, how many points I need to consider for each work area? A minimum of two outlets for work area should be considered. Four outlets are recommended according to the standards. Then, keep in your mind, depending on the installation size Work area might be different from standard recommendations. Might be bigger or might be minimum of two outlet.
The telecommunication room size can be determined according to this table. If we have a usable area of the floor, which is 465 meters square or less, we can use a telecommunication room dimensions of 3 meter by 2.4 meter. While if we have a space or a usable area of 456 meters square and less than or equal to 743 meters square, then our telecommunication room dimension shall be 3 meter by 2.74 meter. If we have larger than 743 meters square and lesser than or equal to 929 meters square, then we have to select the room of 3 meter by 3.4 meter dimensions. Those dimensions shown are the minimum requirement dimension for each telecommunication room. In case of having smaller buildings, we can use the second table to determine our requirement of the telecommunication space. If we have 465 meters square or less, we can replace the telecommunication room with something called walk-in rooms, which is 1.3 meter by 1.3 meter dimension. There is another thing called shallow rooms, which is 0.6 meter deep by 2.6 meter wide. If we have a usable area of 93 meters square, we can use a wall, ca wall cabinets self-contained cabinet or any closed cabinet. Those areas below, below 93 meters square can be called telecommunication enclosure and not telecommunication room anymore. This is a typical room layout and how the furniture that will come into the layout uh, we need, of course, we need uh, the door, which should be open outside. Uh, we need light fixtures. We need light switch. We, need, we rec It's recommended to have electrical panels related to the telecom room in the same place. We are expecting to have pathways connecting the system or connecting our cabling system to outside the room. Uh, the pathways can be... Uh, cable trays, cable ba basket, or sleeves. Uh, we need uh, some, sometimes a plywood backboard, depending on the service provider requirement. Uh, then we need a, a JVAC supply or return. Uh, and we need dedicated uh, receptacles. We are going to talk about each and every uh, requirement uh, later on. Uh, this is an example of shallow room and walk-in room. Once we completed the telecommunication room calculations, we can count the equipment room sizing. Again, back to the definition of equipment room, it is environmentally controlled centralized space for telecommunication equipment that usually house a main or intermediate cross-connect. The minimum required size of the equipment room shall be 3 meter by 4.9 meter and should be allocated to equipment room. In addition to space for telecommunication room equipment and cabling, equipment room shall have space for environmental control equipment power distribution or conditioning or UPS. How to, ter to determine the minimum size of equipment room? First of all, we need to determine the number of individual work area. And then we need to determine the number of bass work area. And then we need to determine the minimum 
ER size can be calculated in the equation. As we said before, the minimum size is 3 meter by 4.9 meter. But in case you have more baths and work areas, this size might be not efficient. The calculations equation down, which is number of work area multiplied by 0 0.075 meter square plus the number of bass work area multiply, multiplied by 0 0.023 meter square. Once we determine the size of equipment room, we need to consider a design considerations for equipment room. The major factors that shall be considered when we are choosing the location of the equipment room, it is the space required for the equipment, provisions of future expansions, access for delivery and installation for large equipment and cables, building facilities that serve and are served by equipment room, access provider requirements, proximity to electrical services and mechanical equipment, proximity and potential sources of electromagnetic interferences, relationship to services entrances for telecommunications and electrical power, access and proximity to telecommunication cabling pathways, for example, installation in which the equipment room serves multiple backbones, and then floor loading. All of those considerations need to be discussed before, before the selection of equipment room, place, and location. As a reminder, the ER is the location for housing main cross-connect or campus distribution and it is providing connection between equipment and the backbone. The backbone runs shall extend it to intermediate cross-connect or horizontal cross-connect. Many ERs also contain the horizontal cross-connect or floor distribution to serve work areas on the same floor and many have entrance facilities for campus backbone runs and access provider services. So it is crucial to properly design the layout of equipment room. When we are designing the layout, we need to design the cable pathways entering the equipment room or within the equipment room. We have to ensure that the layout avoid cable congestions allow access to the cables, provide adequate storage of the cable slack, and minimize cable stress. This picture showing the typical equipment room from inside. You can clearly see power DB on the wall, wide door, and racks on the left side as well as a cabling pathways on the top. So far we have counted the gross area, the usable area, the number of work areas and we have determined the telecom room size and equipment room sizes as well as the best location of each space. We need to design the pathways for these spaces and how we are going to connect our cables between those spaces. We don't discuss this in those slides, but you have to keep in your consideration it is part of the telecommunication system designer. The last thing we have to design is the entrance facility. Mainly, building larger than 9,290 meters square of 
gross area must contain dedicated room of for entrance facility. What if we don't have this gross area or we have lesser than this gross area? We have to use a termination space inside the equipment room. And this termination space is basically an AC grade void free plywood backboard, a height of 2.4 meter with the maximum or minimum thickness of 19 mm. It should be securely fastened with the grade C surface facing the supporting wall. The width of this termination space can be taken from the table shown. For example, if we have a gross area of the building of 929 meters square, then a wall of termination space should be 1000 mm width and so on until we reach 9,290 meters square. For a building having more than 9,290 meters square, separate room should be used for uh, entrance facilities. And we have the table below showing, depending on your gross area, how many meter of or what is the room size recommendation according to the gross area of the total building. So you can refer to this table always when you are going to do the design of your interest facility. Horizontal pathways are very important piece of structured cabling systems. They are concealing, protecting, supporting, and provide access to horizontal cabling between the telecommunication outlet and the horizontal cross connect. When designing building, the layout and capacity of the horizontal pathway system shall be documented in floor plans and other building specifications. The designer is responsible for ensuring those systems have built-in flexibility to accommodate tenant movement and expansions. In addition, the designer should design the horizontal pathway system to make the maintenance and relocation of the cabling as easy as possible. When determining the type and size of pathway, the designer should consider the quantity and size of cables that the pathway is intended to support, then allow for growth of the area served over the planning cycle. The part of structural cabling system which is located between telecommunication room and telecommunication outlet, it is the horizontal cabling systems. There are three methods to connect those two together. First, direct connection. Then we can connect them using consolidation point or we can connect them using multi-user telecommunication outlet assembly. For all of the above connection type, we need a proper pathways. An example of those pathways are cable trays, metallic and non-metallic conduits, cable ladders, cable baskets, and J-hooks, which are heavily used in North America. In order to properly design a cabling systems, we need to calculate the number of cables which are located in each and every, every pathway. In order to do the cable tray calculations, we need to plan the initial fill ratio of 25% of the cable tray or cable runway. The maximum fill ratio of any cable tray shall be 50%. It should be noted that a fill ratio of 50% for four pair and similar size cables will physically fill the entire tray due to spaces between cables and random placement of them. 
There is another note which is the maximum depth of any cable tray shall be 150 mm or 6 inches. This is prevent any stacking of cables and cable deformation because of cable weights. Now, how to calculate the maximum number of cables for a tray? We have an example here of 300 mm by 50 mm tray. What is the maximum numbers of 7 mm cables can be used? To count the number of the cables, the equation says the number of cables is the cross-sectional area of the tray multiplied, multiplied by 2 or multiplied by 0.5 and divided by area of the cable. Therefore, the 300 mm by 50 mm tray will accommodate 193 cables of 7 mm diameter maximum. When we are going to design the system, it is recommended to do the 25% fill ratio as initial plan. If we are not expecting any additional cables to be run on the same tray, we can go for the maximum of 50% fill ratio. Similar to cable trays and cable runways, cone widths need to be designed properly. Regarding the main requirement for cone width design, we should consider below. No section of conduit shall be longer than 30 meters. And no section between any pull point shall be longer than 30 meters. No section of conduit shall have more than 290 degrees bend. The inside bend radius of the conduit, 2 inch or less shall be at least 6 times the internal diameter. For conduit with an internal diameter more than 50 mm, the inside bend radius shall be at least 10 times of the internal diameter. Pull boxes should be accessible and should be installed in stride section of the conduit and not used as a place of Bend. Conduit fill ratio is 40%. How to calculate the number of cables? The number of cables for each conduit can be calculated using the equation. The conduit internal diameter into the power of 2 multiplied by 0.4 divided by outside diameter um, uh, of the cable uh, in, into the power of 2. Example of 25 mm conduit, we will have 5 cables can be run of 25 internal diameter, 25 mm internal diameter conduit. Another part of horizontal distribution system is consolidation point and Motoa. We are going to discuss them in the this slide and next slide. Consolidation point used in case of expected move, add, or change in outlet locations. This is highly used in over an office environment. Normally fitted below raised floor or above false ceiling or within building columns. It is not recommended to fit the CP inside furnitures without permanently securing them in the building structure. The minimum distance from the telecom room shall be 15 meters. Uh, each CP shall serve a maximum of 12 work areas. Sh shall contain interconnection setup only. Any active equipment are not allowed inside the CP. It is recommended to use factory pre-terminated cables for the CP connections. 
to connect the office outlet to the CP location. It's required work area equipment code. Unlike the CP, the multi-user communication outlet assembly basically extend the cables or the work area patch code up to 22 meter. It is highly used in expected change environment, such as rapidly change in work area user requirements. It serves 12 work area also. It should be installed inside the furniture for easy access. By using Motoa, we shall expect the total channel link degrade from 100 meter to 95 meter or less. This is because of using long runs of standard stranded cables. Simply, Motoa connect the work area equipment directly by using long patch codes. In order to connect communication spaces together, we usually use sleeves or slots. This is typically used when vertically aligned to the communication rooms and are connected with sleeves or slots. It is most common for backbone pathways. They are desirable because the architect can stack them with other mechanical spaces and they make distribution for telecommunication cables more efficient because of shorter conduits, bonding and cabling runs. There are general rules for sleeves and slots. Sleeves a, a minimum of 500 mm sleeve between floor to other floor shall be provided. And depending, and this serve up to 3,716 meters square of usable floor space. We can add more additional sleeves whenever we have more area to be served. Similarly, the slots are typically located flush against the wall within a space and should be designed at a depth of 152 mm width and 610 mm length or, na or narrower. The size of the sleeve or the, uh, the size of the slot can be increased according to the area as well. This is a typical graph showing the aligned telecommunication spaces which are shown on the as a gray area and the locations of the sleeves between each floor and the other floor. Separation between data and power in structure cabling system should be maintained all the time. Zero separation distance is permitted when either electrically conduct conductive telecommunication cables or the power cables or both are enclosed in metallic pathway that meet the following conditions. First of all, it is metallic pathway completely enclosed, enclosing the cable and continuous. Metallic pathway shall properly grounded and bonded as per TIA 607B. Walls of pathways have minimum thickness of 1 mm, nominal thickness if it's made of steel, or 1.5 mm nominal thickness if it's made of aluminium. It is recommended to have a 300 mm separation between structure cabling pathways and power pathways. In case of fluorescent lighting, the twisted pair cabling system should be separated from fluorescent lamp and fixtures by minimum of 125 mm as a minimum. How to choose the backbone media? The choice of transmission media may depend on the application. However, there are several factors that should be considered. 
uh, of course the flexibility of of the medium which is uh, res respect with respect to supported services required use of life of backbone cabling the site size and user population uh, the typical transmission media used for backbone it is multi-mode fiber optic single mode fiber optic and 100 ohm balance Though this table show, showing how to choose the media guideline and what are the requirement or what are the length, maximum length that we can go for each and every uh, media and what is the data rates for each and every media and each length. Now we are going to look at general considerations for telecommunication rooms, equipment rooms, and interest facilities. First of all, we will talk about accessibility. Telecommunication spaces that are intended to serve multiple tenants should be located in common spaces, such as a common corridor, or it should be accessible through uh, outside door. Telecommunications spaces that are intended to serve multiple tenants may also present security concerns for some tenants um, that we are talking about access control, for example. And in case of sharing network equipment, there should be physical security inside each and every rack that contains a multi-tenant component. The second is the ceiling. The minimum ceiling height should be 2.4 meters or 8 feet and it should be measured from the finished floor. The recommendation is 3 meters higher from the finished floor level. In addition to that, the ceiling should minimize dust and to be light color to enhance the room lighting. Next, we need to discuss the clearances. We have to provide one meter or 3.28 feet of clear unobstructed space for the installation and maintenance of all cabling and equipment mounted on walls or racks or cabinets, as well as enclosures. We have to provide at least 150 mm or six inch depth of the wall for wall mounted equipment. We need to allocate a space of at least one meter wide by one meter depth and 2.3 meter height for each equipment rack or enclosure. We have to provide space for aisle at least one meter width in front of and at the back side of each equipment rack. Cabinet or enclosure shall have a clearance, clearance space and shall take into account the depth of the rack or the enclosure or enclosure used. Next is the doors. Doorways that are planned for use during equipment delivered should have fully opening and when we talk about fully opening it should be 180 degree uh, if the local building codes permits and it should be lockable and at least having a width of 0.91 meter uh, for the telecom room and 1.98 meter or almost 2 meters high uh, for the equipment room we need a larger equipment to be uh, located in the equipment room so we need double door with 1.83 meter width and a little bit higher height 2.3 meter height of the door regarding the dust and static electricity 
we need to install anti-static floor tiles or grounding floor tiles and, and mats and it should be bonded to ground using manufacturer recommendation or manufacturer recommended hardware. If the carpet, the carpet should be installed in the room, then it should be anti-static. One of the major topics of consideration for telecommunication room and equipment room is the electrical power. We need a minimum of two dedicated non-switch alternating current AC receptacles or outlet for equipment power. And uh, this recommendation to be done for each and every equipment rack that we have in a telecom room or uh, equipment room. And it is uh, better to have each one of them on individual branch circuit. When we say non-switch, that means those are not controlled by wall switch or other occupancy, occupancy sensor in order not to lose the service. In addition to those equipment outlets or equipment power receptacles, we need a separate duplex or quad convenience receptacles or outlets. Those should, should be used for tools and field uh, instruments. It should be located at least 150 mm or 6 inch above the finished floor and it should be placed uh, in an interval of 1.83 meter or 6 feet interval surrounding the perimeter walls. We need to coordinate the light switch in a location for easy access upon the entry of the room. We need to provide an interruptible power supply. It is recommended to have it uh, from a local or central source. Uh, it is possible or it is recommended to have a dedicated power panels to serve the telecommunication space. Uh, it is recommended to have separate distribution panels that serve telecommunication room uh, or telecommunication equipment from others that serve lighting. One of the most important factors that we need to consider during design of our telecommunication spaces is the environmental control or heat ventilation and air conditioning. Generally, we have to maintain a continuous and dedicated environmental control that works 24 hours per day, 356 days per year. This is challenging because we need a system, a reliable system that will work continuously. In addition to that, if we are expecting any power interruptions, we need to connect our system to the emergency power supply. Generally, we need to maintain positive pressure in a telecommunication room. In addition to that, we have a minimum of one air change per hour in a telecommunication spaces. The general idea is to dissipate the heat generated by active devices in the telecom room. Therefore, the design of heat ventilation and air cooling system should be done properly. Other consideration in telecommunication rooms is the fire protection. A fire alarm system should be installed in telecom space. In addition to that, we have to have a portable fire extinguishers with appropriate ratings that should be mounted as near as possible to the entrance. Other factors need to be considered is the flood, flood of prevention. When we are designing the room, we should locate our room in a place that above any threat of flooding. Other consideration that we need to look at in a telecommunication room and equipment room is floor loading, lighting, uh, location, uh, security, and so on. 
Starting from floor loading, uh, we need to check our equipment size and weight and discuss this weight with uh, the building architect in order to get the actual floor loading for the specific space. Regarding the lighting, lighting is very important in any telecom space. So we have to provide a minimum of 538 lux uh, at the point of cable termination. Uh, the lux is the measurement of light. So we need to maintain this unit in the, the point of cable termination. We need to lo locate the light fixtures, a uh, minimum of 2.6 meter above the finished floor whenever possible. And we need to coordinate it according to the rack location and we need to put it as closely uh, as to the rack or cabinet or the enclosure location. Regarding the location of the telecommunication room itself, in multi-floor building, it is recommended to be aligned vertically. Vertical. Telecommunication space sh should be located in areas that are dedicated to telecommunication use only. Uh, it's not recommended to use uh, stores or uh, other facilities as a telecommunication space. So telecom telecommunication space should be designed at the beginning of the project. In addition, the safety and the clean environment is very important. All telecommunication spaces should be kept free of any storage material or other uh, obstructions that could prevent technicians from performing their duties or create any fire hazard. And this is one of the common mistakes. People, people keep boxes or any um, materials that can be fire hazard in the future. We talked about security and just we are emphasizing the necessity of protection of the physical asset located in the telecommunication rooms. Um, we need to require to have a range of solutions uh, from simple mechanical access control, uh, locks uh, or simple keys to a sophisticated electronic security system. Now we are going to talk about one of the important topics related to distribution system design, which is grounding and bounding. According to NCTIA 607-C, the definition of grounding or earthing is the establishment of a reference for the electrical power source or the electrical equipment or both of them. And this is applicable for alternative current AC or direct current DC. In, on the other hand, bonding is the connection intended to equalize safely and effectively the potential differences between two metallic items. And according to uh, TIA 607-C, there are many definitions defined each and every component in the system. For example, there is something called telecommunication main grounding bus bar, TMGB, which is a solid copper grounding bus bar, four inch thick and four inch high. Uh, it comes with variable length. Uh, this should be installed with insulated standoff in the entrance facility or at the equipment room. The other definition of telecommunication grounding bus bar, TGB, this one should be located in telecommunication room and it is different from the TMGB by the Hyatt size. So it has come exactly similar uh, thickness, but the Hyatt is uh, two inch instead of four inch for TMGB. And again, it comes with variable length depending on how many bonding conductors that we are going to use. Each bus bar is drilled with rows of holes according to NEMA standard 
for attachment of bolted compression fittings and you can see on the right hand uh, on the right the uh, the fittings that can be fixed uh, on the bus bar then we have something called a telecommunication equipment bonding conductor tebc uh, this will connect frames cabinets any metallic object in the in the, in the telecommunication system and it can provide a bonding conductor for each and every uh, uh, metallic object and this will be grounded back to the bus bar using a minimum of 6 AWG or 4.1 mm grounding conductor then there's something called telecommunication bounding backbone which is the connection between bus bars from the main telecom telecommunication uh, grounding bus bar to telecommunication uh, bus bars uh, should be solid copper cable and uh, between all the closets and rooms and should be minimum of 6 AWG uh, and maximum of 3 slash 0 AWG. This backbone is connected to main grounding bus bar in the telecommunication entrance facility uh, to an earth ground in the electrical entrance. So uh, it shouldn't be separate bounding system should be connected by the end to the main electrical ground facility and uh, to any steel structure uh, uh, for each floor so in the steel structure building should be connected directly to the steel structure as well for each and every floor this is a diagram of the grounding uh, system according to TIA standard. You can see on the left bottom there is electrical entrance and you can see in the middle there is telecommunication main grounding bus bar and you have telecommunication backbone conductor connecting the main grounding bus bars and telecommunication grounding bus bars and connecting uh, the building uh, steel structure and then you have uh, from telecommunication grounding bus bar or telecommunication main grounding bus bar you have small line connecting the panels and connecting the equipment room uh, the, the telecommunication equipment uh, this is the con uh, this is the grounding conductor and you can see the dotted line between the telecommunication equipment equipment this means that there is existing ground which is established by electrical systems but what we are going to do in in by proposing this telecommunication grounding we are going to establish additional grounding system to the electrical system that will give strength to the main grounding system provided by the electrical system another concept for the designing of telecommunication system is the fire stopping and one purpose for every building safety code to reduce the threat of fire we can do uh, reducing by prevention we can you do reducing by detection or suppression those are three methods are used heavily to reduce the risk of fire of fire but we have something else it's our responsibility to to use in, in telecommunication system design which is compartmentation and in this process we are dividing structures into small spaces or zone 
Each zone must be able to contain an internal fire or resist an external fire for a specific time or period. And why we say compartmentation? Because we are dealing with telecom rooms when our cables enter the telecom rooms and go out from the telecom rooms and there is opening in those telecom rooms. We need, the, the basic concept is we need to close the, this opening with a fire rated material in order to prevent or to uh, stop the, the fire from spreading, spreading into the room or from the room to outside the room. There are two types of, of this fire stops. There are mechanical and there are non-mechanical and there is wide range of selections between the both. The mechanical is a pre-manufactured electro uh, pre-manufactured elastromeric component shaped to fit around standard cables or tubes or conduits. Non-mechanicals, these comes in variety of forms that have benefit of adapting to irregular opening and cut off and, and off-center penetration items, examples, putties, chalks, cementos materials, um, in, intumescent sheet, uh, intumescent wrap straps, silicone foams, and pre-manufacturers, pre-manufactured of fire stops are expensive. Uh, and it's required to be built with the wall and require uh, pre-preparation uh, and design. While this kind of uh, non-mechanical fire stop, it can be installed anytime. It can be uh, suitable for retrofit jobs. Um, it, 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 as we said before, uh, we mentioned the type and what are they uh, in the previous slide. In addition to uh, fire stops and grounding, we need to uh, have administration for our system. Uh, we need to administer, administer the system using records, uh, linkage or reports. Nowadays, there are more smart way of system administration, which is used uh, um, uh, what we call a smart, a smart cabling system or intelligent system, where you have the patch panel detecting the patch code and you have a software related or connected to this patch panel and to this system in order to give you the add and move and change to your systems. But in general, according to the standard, according to TIA 606, the requirement, this is, there is a minimum requirement for administration. We need to label and record keep of all the or all the elements that we have in our system, including backbone distribution, pathways, horizontal distribution, and the pathways of the horizontal distribution, telecommunication grounding and bounding, we need to administer those and label them, spaces in general, okay, and as well as the fire stopping. So in general, we, we have to label and name each and every one of this uh, component of these components. So we are expecting to have labels on pathways. We are expecting to have labels on backbone systems. We are expecting to have labels on horizontal distribution system. We have uh, ex we are expecting to have labels on grounding and bounding. Uh, we are expecting to have labels on spaces, for example, uh, the telecom room, the, the number of numbering of the telecom room, the, the numbers or the numbering on the uh, racks and cabinets, and we are expecting to have labels on the fire stopping itself. Um, according to the standard, uh, there are many field colors that we are referring to in order to understand which type of field is this. And you can see from the graph 
there there are multiple fields and multiple colors that distinguish each and every field of telecommunication system for example you can see on the top there is a blue field blue field means that this is a horizontal system or horizontal cable so whenever you can see a blue field and it can be established the blue color can be established even on the cables or it can be established on the label of that referring to this to this field then you will automatically understand this blue field is for horizontal cabling system then you have gray field for for second level backbone then you have a white field for for first level backbone so you can distinguish easily what level of backbone what level of horizontal cable that you are going to to use and there are some supported colors for example yellow for miscellaneous connectivity you have purple for common equipment brown for uh, interbuilding backbone okay when you are going to connect multiple buildings the field of interbuilding backbone it should be brown field and below is the table showing each and every color uh, with the identification of the color in a cross connection field uh, by showing this table we are going to to end this uh, presentation i hope it was useful for you and please don't hesitate to contact me my contacts are shown in the first page of uh, this presentation uh, in case of you have any uh, question or any clarification that you need to to ask about thank you very much